Hello everyone, today we have a deck that is interesting for sure. If you have Null, if you have Thanos, this is currently one of my better performing decks on the ladder, and it just pumps so much power. It has elements of surprise, it has additional reach, really good draw, and so it's fairly consistent. I've been able to maintain about a 65% win rate with this deck so far, over about 25 games total that I've tested it. And that is a smaller sample size, but most of my time is being dedicated to conquest mode. And whenever I have a deck that performs this well on a smaller sample size, it usually carries over for quite a while because over that sample size, you see a good portion of the current meta. You can kind of tell the deck's strengths and weaknesses. Now the strengths for this deck, right now in the meta, we're seeing a lot of Spider-Man. We're seeing a lot of Storm. And so that is why we included the Arnold Zola. Arnold Zola gives us just enough reach that we're able to surprise the opponent by positioning power differently or into different lanes that they're not expecting. We can also use Time Stone on four to allow us to do a null into an Arnold Zola, which is always a wild and fantastic line. This deck also benefits from locations like Cloning Vats because Venom just gets absurdly large from having that repeated destruction. Things like Bar Sinister where we can really ramp up our cards are fantastic as well. Overall, this is very similar to just a straight, honest destruction deck, but it has the benefit of having that additional early game to generate some additional draws. You have your stones that can really help propel you and generate additional destructions for your death, buff up your null a little bit, and a lot of times you'll lull your opponent into a false sense of security when they're expecting a Thanos zoo, whenever they're expecting a an ongoing Thanos or a control heavy Thanos, and then all of a sudden you drop your Killmonger and a lot of destruction on them, you can swing a lot of games back in your favor. I've noticed that with this deck and with Thanos decks in general, you're usually able to generate four and eight cube games more often because it's harder for your opponent to pinpoint exactly what your play line and your plan is for that game. And so a lot of times you can do a surprising play on the last turn that they're not anticipating. This is especially true, I think, for Conquest mode, because the first couple of matches, maybe you just used your stones before finding your advantage and snapping, and then your opponent doesn't get as much information off of that game as what you do. And so overall, the deck has ran phenomenally. I, I really enjoy being able to do both Null and Arnold Zola, and you're not going to use both of them every single game, but there are some games where you'll use them in unison, and it generates an incredible high roll as a result. And so with the brief deck explanation out of the way, we're going to go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, first up we have uh, Fatimas. The first location is Nidavellir. Uh, previously in like a Thanos destroy, like light destroy style deck, we we used quite a few. We all used only a, a light touch of destruction and beast. But since beast went from a two to a three cost, it's a little bit clunkier than it was before. And so what we're going to be doing here is just trying to draw as many cards as we can. Because if we can get Venom, Nidavellir is phenomenal for us and then we can hit it with like an Arnold Zola we can potentially do a time stone to do an Arnold Zola or a Null and then an Arnold Zola we can just so much that we can do they have a Yondu so are they running a destroy deck as well I'm not sure why we've seen such a like a such an increase in destroy decks but they've been in a pretty good spot the biggest thing that hurts the destroy decks is like lockdown but with this one, a storm isn't really going to stop us. Spider-Man isn't a guaranteed stop. Um, and we have several ways to deal with the opponent's bigger cards. And so the Yondu destroyed our, our Power Stone. Yeah, that's fine. They do an Electro. So this looks like a Galactus list. And so let's see if we can, let's see if we can maneuver and win against the Galactus player. I think we're going to do Time Stone plus Venom. That's going to that's gonna allow us to consolidate this middle location. If they try to do a Goblin, yes, it'll go off, but that's okay. And we'll have six energy, so we're going to be able to do something big like uh, like a Null. On turn five, we can always do Null into like an Arnold Zola. We could do Null into... Or we could do Arnold Zola on the Venom, moving it into the left and the right location, and then we just have a massive Null to lean in on. I just, I, I think we have a pretty good spot. Whoa, the Enchantress. Hey, what are you running, Fatimus? What kind of deck are you running? What are you cooking? So the Null right now is only 10 power, but we have Shang-Chi, which could take out this one. I think we do Arnim Zola this turn. That's going to bring our death down to three, 
399 because that's one, two, three, four, five. Three death trigger. We'll have null plus death on the last turn. And that should give us quite a bit of value, I think. Um, I may, oh no. Did they juke us out? Do they go with a, I mean, do they go with Galactus? If so, and they did Galactus in the Isle of Silence, that's fine. We didn't need it, it turns out. But I don't know, I, I am curious what they ended up going with. And so our Venom in the left lane's huge. Our Venom in the right lane's gonna be pretty big as well. The Wolverine will bounce somewhere, it doesn't really matter where. We have a really big lead, just kind of all across the board. If they do go Galactus, 1-800-Galactus. If you have it, you gotta use it. 38 power null on our hands. 399 death on our hands. Um, if they use... If they use Shang-Chi here, that's fine. If they use Shang-Chi here, that buffs up our null. We're still good here. So we're going to go ahead and end this one. I think they probably retreat out. Now that we blocked their Galactus, I think they retreat out. I'm really confused at the Enchantress, though. Yondu, Electro, both of those said Galactus. But then you went and dropped an Enchantress on us. Which a Electro on three, Enchantress on four, when you could have spent five energy, is so low tempo. And you only have, what, one or two turns to utilize it? It gets kind of rough. They could have a null. They could have a null of their own. Not null. Wait. Victory. Even if they had correctly placed the null, we would have won the left lane with the Arnim Zola addition, adding insult to injury. We will take the two cubes. Let's let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Tuslo. The first location is Titan. I'm okay if we eventually change it. If not, Null into Arnim Zola is always a wild line. I love the time stone into Null into an Arnim Zola to just pump so much power into two of the three locations that it's so hard for the opponent to overcome. Now they could have a Shang-Chi, but it's really hard to place or pinpoint exactly where they should be playing their Shang-Chi. So the Soul Stone comes down. We have Time Stone, but I don't think we're going to utilize it. Den of Lear is also fantastic. Let's go Wolverine. See if we draw a stone next turn to start enabling some of our additional draw. If not, I think we'll have to buy the bullet. I think we'll have to play the Time Stone and not use it for our fun cool line. But Nid of Lear is great for Venom. This is the second game in a row that we had Nid of Lear. Last, last location is a Limbo. We either save that as a last turn, like surprise shift, or the opponent with Reality Stone, where we switch it back in our favor. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We are going to play the Time Stone. We're going to play Bucky Barnes next turn, depending on what we draw. Maybe we draw additional cards. Maybe we change a location. We'll see. We'll see what it looks like. They go ahead and change the Storm location. So if we draw Reality Stone, we can always change that back. If not, the Arnold Zola line becomes a very real possibility. Killmonger will just clear up all of these lanes. Is that what we want to do? We're going to do Space Stone. We're going to do Power Stone. We're going to do Carnage. And then if we go Killmonger, we have a free death. At this point, uh, death is going to be free once we drop the Killmonger because we're clearing all, almost all six of our stones. We clear up the middle location with Nidavlir. Depending on what they drop. Wolverine could potentially bounce over there and allow us to get a little bit more advantage in the lane. We get Venom a touch too late. Oh, we already cleared up Nid of Lear, my friend. Oh well. Wolverine goes into the left lane. We do have a pretty big Carnage. Not the biggest Carnage I've ever seen, but it's pretty big. Okay, now we have Null. We're no longer playing, my friend huge all right we're, we're gonna do we're gonna move the wolverine over courtesy of the, of the space stone from last turn we're gonna use venom to uh consolidate this nid of Lear location ideally we get like an arnold zola here on this next turn and we can uh push our venom to the left and to the right and i'm hoping that they do not have a shang chi shang chi would decimate us here we have a massive null wolverine bounces back into mid ah uh, arnold zola now becomes uh, a liability if they destroy Wolverine, though, with the Shang-Chi, then all of a sudden that lane becomes a liability because Wolverine's going to bounce around. We'll see. We're going to do we're gonna do Null to the left, 
Mind Stone in mid. If they think the Evolved Hulk is the biggest card, the biggest, baddest card around, they have not seen my, they have not seen my Null. Whoa, wait. So confused. What? Were they, were they anticipating the Artem Zola? I don't know. I don't know what happened. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I can't even explain it. I can't even explain what we, what was supposed to happen here. We hold down the left in the middle location. We will go ahead and take the two cubes. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have Hollyox. They're running a Nimrod avatar. So they could be, could potentially be running a destroy deck as well. If so, we're fine. We actually see Yondu. We haven't seen Yondu thus far. Yondu is going to help buff up our Null. Tell us a little bit about what deck the opponent's running and maybe give us some additional insight along the way. Let's go ahead and play the Yondu and Soulstone into the left lane. The middle location is Wakanda, so we're not going to play anything we want to destroy unless we get Reality Stone. Let's go ahead and see Deathlock. Another destroy deck. Why does this always seem to happen? I ran a, I, I ran a Silver Surfer deck earlier, and I ran into two Silver Surfers out of 10 games. Confirmation bias, I think so. Still, really? All right, we have our Venom, so we can go ahead and we can eat this left lane. We can be eating good tonight. Is is that enough? Is that what we want to do? We can also do Wolverine and Mindstone. Draw our additional cards, giving us a better consistency on drawing for the rest of the game. Let's do that. I think we do that. Seven power is nothing to like write home about for a Venom play, so I think we're okay there. We have a Sabretooth. So far, their, their line is a little bit slower than what ours is. We have quite a bit enabled on the board. We have Time Stone. We can always Time Stone into like a six cost card next turn. So like a, a Null, Arnim Zola, kind of interesting. Time Stone, Deathlock's not bad. Yeah, let's go ahead and do Time Stone, Deathlock. That's going to give us one additional draw. Ooh, are they running a, a Galactus deck? 1-800 Galactus into mid could be scary. Uh, because they're not going to be able to move the Shuri. We need to fight. We may need to fight for Wakanda. Unless they're thinking of going, of dropping something like a Hobgoblin here on us. We have the five energy, but we don't really get much additional reach out of it. Unfortunately, I think we're going to go Carnage. I want to make use of all of our extra here, but eh, maybe we don't. Carnage, Bucky Barnes, Reality Stone in mid. That way, if they do try to go Galactus into Wakanda, we're okay. So if they play a Nimrod here, uh, I think we have a decent shot of being able to overpower them in this middle location as a result as well. The double power Nimrod is scary, though, because now they can go Destroyer. That opens up quite a possibility for them. Oh. <sighs> Reality is often disappointing. All right, next up we have Batman. Uh, they, we do get their Bishop from the Daily Bugle, so it could be a Sarah control style deck. Could be Bounce. With Bast, I'm with Bast, I'm leaning much more towards Bounce. We take out their Beast. Not a bad, not a bad pull for us. Yondu, we have our Carnage. We have Wolverine, Power Stone. We don't have any additional draw, though, unfortunately, which is... A little bit concerning. The Black Widow comes down, which is not seen in bounce as often anymore. But if they're running the Hawk version, that is uh that's pretty scary. We are gonna go ah, I guess we could have uh stacked everything into mid. <laughs> that way we destroy our Wolverine. Oh well. Okay. They play their bishop. That's gonna get pretty big over the course of the game. I assume that they have the rest of the bounce pieces. Uh so the Hawk, a, a Korg, the uh, I would assume Kitty Pride has made the cut. Don't get any of our draw though. Like we've seen the power stone, and that is it. That's rough. That's a rough draw. Alright, so they do go rock slide on us. I mean there's like a glimmer of hope. If they play their if they play their hawk into dark dimension. We destroy it. It's gonna be a really big null, right? I'm not saying we have a good shot here. We have a shot. 
Nah, not a great shot. We have a shot nonetheless. Let's go null to the left. Uh, since it's only for two cubes and we're post infinite, it doesn't really matter so much. Korg Carnage. Korg Carnage is kind of strange, but it does buff up out. Oh, they got it from uh, the Daily Bugle. So it buffs up our null in the process as well. Oh. I'm sorry, Batman, you're in the wrong cinematic universe. Go back to DC, we're dealing with Marvel here. Let's go ahead and take the two cubes. We'll go ahead and jump into the next one. All right, next up we have organs. The first location is Daily Bugle. It gives us their Sentinel. Uh, we do have Soul Stone, which would allow us to draw additional cards, but I like the idea of doing Yondu. I, I assume that they're running Sarah Control. I am going to opt to do the Soul Stone. I assume that they're doing Sarah Control, but depending on what they play, I think this will give us a lot of information. Oh, wait. Okay, never mind. That makes sense. Um, the, the Yondu was ours. They got it from the Daily Bugle. I was really confused as to a Sentinel on a Yondu deck. They hit our Mind Stone, unfortunately, which is one of our biggest draw enablers in this deck. Let's go ahead and do Yondu. We're going to do Power Stone. We're going to stack them together. That way, uh, maybe we do a Carnage. We can... We can, we can build up the Carnage. If we do a Venom, we can buff up the Venom as well. They do their Sentinel into the unknown location. I kind of hope it ends up being like Space Throne. That would be phenomenal. Um, from our Yondu, we hit their Bishop. So their Bishop is, I assume that this is the Sarah counter deck. They're going to have a Shang-Chi. They're going to have a Killmonger. They're going to have Hitmonkey, maybe Kitty Pride, just depending on when and how they pull it. So I'm going to do Wolverine and Time Stone. Yes, we can do Deathlock, but I like the idea of having, um, oh, wait, we should have done time some next turn. Ah, well, unfortunate. Um, so we're going to have an extra energy here. Not that we necessarily did, but it brings us up to five. Let's do, I don't like to do it in this order, but we're going to do Reality Stone and Deathlock into the same location. Uh, no, that could cap out our right lane. All right, let's do Deathlock. We're going to do Reality Stone into the right lane. I should have saved Time Stone one additional turn to enable our Null, especially knowing that we had it, and Null into Arnhem Zola. Like, we have the line. <laughs> this was the game to do it, and we missed it. So they do a Killmonger early here. They pop their Nova. That's perfectly fine. We're okay with the the Killmonger being out. It helps enable uh, our, our Null and our death eventually. So I mean... You know, this is the second time in about 15 games that Reality Stone has changed the location into Space Throne. Such an unfortunate set of luck. So they do have Kitty Pride. Their bishop's going to be pretty big. I think they will grab initiative going to this last turn. They have Sentinel. They have the right location uh, locked down. Now, what they don't know is that we have a death queued up, ready to go. We take out their Kitty Pride, so they're not going to be able to bounce that one, flood that one back in. But we'll see. We don't have initiative. Is this enough? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. The only benefit we have here is that they can't flood on this last turn to enable like a, a hit monkey. They also don't have Kitty Pride because we popped that with, with our Killmonger. They have Shang-Chi, but they have initiative, which is great for us. I'm trying to think of anything else that like burst wise that they have available. I don't think they're going to be able to get there. Now maybe Atlantis is definitely our weaker lane. Oh, and they go just the left lane with the enchanters. Interesting. So they were hoping the plus five from the bishop was going to be enough. But with our death, with our null, we are able to overcome the two out of the three against all odds. While reality is oftentimes disappointing, we were able to make good with what came after reality that wasn't quite what we wanted and so we will take that let's go ahead and jump over into the next one all right next up we have tuslo one more time the uh the pool of players is rather small we start off with time with mind stone so we're going to draw some additional cards that we also have our time and our reality stone already so we're going to really greatly thin our deck very quickly so that then the stones every time we play them are going to provide us a lot of value um, for each one and the last stone in our deck is the power stone and that is in my opinion the worst stone that you could that you draw into unless you're trying to enable thanos 
At that point, it is just a 1-3 or an extra destruction for your death. So let's go with Reality Stone, but first we want to do Soul Stone. Make sure that whenever we change this location, it's not going to incredibly negatively affect us. So like if it, if we flipped into, I don't know, uh, Altar of Death, something where it just would not fit any additional cards. Um, so Daredevil comes down. They will get a read on turn five. So we want to try and get our stuff out before that point or at least be competing for the other lanes by that point. I'm going to do Time Stone and Carnage both into Kunlun. We eventually have a Space Stone to move. We could use the Time Stone and save it for the uh, for the Arnhem Zola slash Null uh, play, but I, honestly, uh, I want to start some destruction. It's going to discount our death. Plus, with the Daredevil, we want to be having we want to have a pretty good uh, positioning all across the board before turn five. That way, when they get their read, they can't navigate an easy like Professor X lock. And it just becomes more difficult to manage from there. And I know I said we were going to spread out our power, but we are going to stack the Venom. We're going to get him elevated. Next turn, we could do Space Stone, Power Stone. Space Stone, Power Stone, maybe that enables us to do a cheap death as well. Depending on where the Wolverine goes, we may be elevating our New York location as well. Or the sewer system. We're not sure. It does go into sewer system. They play the thing. So it's a high evolutionary deck. It probably has the lockdown component, I would imagine. Them doing ugh. Them doing a Professor X here is kind of unfortunate. Especially if they do end up doing Wasp and Professor X. Uh, but otherwise, I think we're okay. We can do death. I, I would almost rather save her, but we can do death. We can do Power Stone. That's gonna enable us to do maybe like an Arnim Zola on the last turn. We'll see. It also protects us in all three locations from a potential Professor X lock. They could do a Spider-Man lock somewhere. Um, if they were going to do a Spider-Man lock, it'd probably be in the sewer system or in Kunlun. Just so that they can position some additional power there. But New York gives us that flexibility. Plus, what they don't know is we have Arnim Zola. So we could push our death across the board. We could maneuver our Venom. Uh, potentially our Wolverine as well. So let's see. We hit the Doctor Doom. So we know that they're running probably like the wave. No, it is the Spider-Man play, uh, which is which is big. Uh, the the Spider-Man play is big. It's tough to navigate against. But we're gonna go Arnim Zola onto the death, and I think that gives us enough surprise factor that we will win. Um, they snapped back, so it's now eight cubes because we snapped on turn one, looking at a handful of stones. I think the Arnim Zola is just surprising enough to steal us some cubes here. We will see. Oh, maybe not. Oh, no. Had we moved one card over into New York, uh, maybe that could have done it. Okay, so the Wasp is fine. The Evolved Hulk in the left lane isn't enough. It is not. Okay, we do get the eight cubes after the Arnim Zola. I thought they just beautifully predicted our play, but they were just playing to their they were just playing to their odds, assuming that we would stack a lot of power into New York, and we will gladly take the eight cube game and so the arnim zola it's not one that is good every single game but especially when you have the null line i i really enjoy the arnim zola it gives you that surprise element especially with how much storm and spider-man locks we're seeing arnim zola can be an immaculate resource for you we're gonna go ahead and take the eight cube and that is where we're gonna go ahead and end the video i hope that you guys enjoyed it if you did make sure to give it a like and a comment down below and as always this has been tlsg later guys